Hello everyone. So welcome to Education Talk. This is Anil, and uh, this is part of the playlist that we are creating for Flowable. So this is the third session that we are going to talk today, and we will be covering what is BPMN, and then what is Flowable, and why Flowable. So these three will be the quick topics that we are going to talk about. And uh, if you have not subscribed to this channel. Please subscribe. There are uh, other sessions that I have completed before, and then there will be upcoming uh, sessions in this series, which will be very beneficial for you. So uh, let's just have a look. Right. So uh, if we talk about what is BPMN, uh, I'll go to the theory part later. But let's try to understand what is BPMN and uh, why it is important so you might have heard about uh, the workflow the normal data flow how the data is flowing from one stream to another stream and how the other stages of the life cycle uh, follows similarly bpmn is to depict the workflow where uh, it, it comprises of many activities it comprises of many responsibilities segregated with the different set of users and this is to depict uh, visually uh, a, a connected chain mechanism of uh, multiple uh, actors in a part of workflow. I, I think that's a enough theory. Let me just talk about some practical example. So just assume like um, you are working in industry, maybe a software company, and uh, as a like uh, requester, you need to hire some resources, technical resources for your team, right? So there is a need of someone who's raising a request. So you are the initiator of that workflow since you are creating that demand where the downstream or the connected systems uh, to this requirement will work like uh, your hr team or the recruitment team will pick up that information and will start searching for uh, 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 the resumes and they will like uh, start engaging vendors to fulfill your demand right so that is the initiators uh, that uh, that uh, that you just uh, started now the next thing is what they will do they will they may start multiple channels they may start uh, uh, searching on knockery or similar portals they may start asking to the vendors that is the second possibility they may have some internal pools of resources right so there are multiple possibilities where they can start working so this means like it is very uh, difficult to manage when there are like so many parties connected and you uh, as a like request initiator don't have the complete knowledge what is happening and what recru recruitment team is doing let's make this a little more complicated right uh, let's assume that you have some of the resources uh, which are like uh, which are in the pipeline right so you have some of the resources which are in the pipeline and uh, maybe one resource from uh, uh, some vendor you have engaged and the they are on the first level of interview by some panelist right so you as initiator uh, are not uh, like in touch who are taking the interviews but you should know like where your application you have raised the request of four resources two on java one is on python and another one is on maybe flowable let's say so as a requester you need to know and you need to be on top of what you are going to hire where it is currently pending but if, if you see that the workflow is getting complicated when there are multiple channels there are one is like you need to coordinate with recruitment team for knowing what is the status of your request and then the second thing these individual uh, uh, like streams who are providing the source of resume like uh, any uh, job portal or uh, internal vendor or maybe internal pool so you cannot coordinate with uh, so many folks right and then you also need to know like how many resources which are like identified uh, we are depending they may be pending on first level of interview they may not be uh, scheduled so far or uh, there can be some offer stage right so this all is very difficult and uh, not easy to manage thing uh, if we don't have any process in place right so this is one of the example where bpmn is very helpful what you do is like you channelize it and all the tools and uh, the supported mechanism actually help you to be on top of each information at each level so they have proper notification mechanism and they have uh, coordination between different uh, system and the parties 
which is very helpful. Now, let me just give you another example. I, I hope this must be clear. If you have any doubt about it, just uh, reach out to me in the comment section. But still, like I, I would try to give you another example and it should make your life much easier to understand what is BPM. Right. Uh, for example, uh, you, you are planning for some holidays with the family and uh, uh, what you want to do is you want someone to uh, delegate this responsibility for identifying your hotel, right, for uh, 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 booking your flight tickets, for uh, selecting your cab or, or the taxi from your place to airport and then from airport to the host hotel or uh, resort, right, whatever it is. What you will do, either you will just go and book all by yourself, right? But just take an example. If you are booking for uh, like uh, for your organization, for your corporate booking, this is not easy, right? You need to do a lot of check and uh, you need to come up with a lot of planning for that and it will be very tedious. So let's assume that there is a workflow and we, we, we would want to like make it a little more complex. Let's assume that I don't want to book a flight ticket if the hotel or the resort is not booked or the vice versa. I don't want to book a flight ticket if the hotel or the resort is not booked, right? Or uh, if the flight ticket is uh, like hotel and resort is booked but flight ticket is not available, definitely I don't want to go for that. But the third one is optional. I can, I can, I cannot change my decision. If the taxi is not available, I'll, I'll go for Ola or the Uber or the other alternative option because these are not like the mandatory thing as such for me. So um, what you want to do is you want to give that responsibility to make my trip. You tell them that this is my requirement and I want this deal to be done if and only if flight tickets as well as the resort booking is done within my price range. So that is what you're telling them. Now at uh, make my trip, I'm not just quoting uh, make my trip may have the system. I'm just quoting any other uh, uh, like uh, this travel agencies. They may have the similar system or maybe uh, some uh, a much advanced system or uh, maybe they, they may be using the same. So uh, for, for that say, let's assume that make my trip is taking your deal. And what they are doing is they are running two parallel process or maybe three parallel process. One is to check the flight status. And the one is to check the hotel uh, 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 hotel validity and then uh, available uh, availability. And the third, that they are checking for a taxi. Now, if the taxis are available, yes, they need to go and book. But they need to check first whether the deal combining uh, your flight ticket and as well as your uh, hotel availability. If these two are available, then only they will go and book the taxi. So what they'll go, they will just start two parallel process. And the condition for that two parallel process to complete is both availability should met true. So it's like an and condition. If the flight ticket is available true or uh, and uh, if your uh, uh, hotel availability is true, then only these three uh, processes will be booked end to end. So this is where the BPMN or something similar workflow are very useful. There are a lot of uh, the different options available in the market i started uh, with my career on oracle bpm and i designed some of the uh, like very big and giant uh, uh, workflow for one of our us client uh, for confidentiality i cannot tell you the name of that client but yeah that is uh, that is how like it started and then uh, i i developed this for one of uh, uh, the big company uh, in india where I designed the workflow in Oracle BPM. And then there are certain other BPMs as well. They have um, in the market, there are certain leaders, like they have uh, Pega BPM, they have uh, IBM BPM as well. Uh, they have Oracle as one of the option. They have Activity BPM and JBPM as an open source. So here comes the Flowbill. Flowbill is also forked out of Activity BPM in 2016. But we enough talked about uh, uh, this theoretical or the practical example of uh, BPMN. Let's under understand some of the uh, theory part, what this BPMN means and who's maintaining those standards. So as you can see in this slide, the business process modeling notation is visual modeling language for business analysis applications and specifying enterprise process workflows. 
which is an open standard notation for graphical flowcharts that is uh, used to define business process workflows. There are some standards and notations defined by object management group, OMG group is known as BPMN. So current version is BPM 2.0. Each BPM process has a sequence of flow object connected with a series of activities and have at least a start and end event to produce a specific outcome. So here's an important point. Uh, so if, if you will open and introspect what is in the BPM file, which is mostly an XML file, and it contains your uh, detail about series of uh, activities connected together, and then some of the business logic, so it's a low code or the no code kind of a platform that you can assume. We will definitely go and uh, talk about these things in detail in our upcoming sessions. Uh, yeah, so um, with, with that, uh, uh, I hope VPMN on uh, like a practical perspective, it must be clear. And then from theory perspective, it must be clear to, clear to